In the years since Vladimir Putin launched the invasion of Ukraine, the Russian fighting forces have turned out to be disorganized and ineffective. In one area, however, an expert says they have been calculated and proficient torturing Ukrainians. CBS News foreign correspondent Ian Lee has a special report and a warning. Some of the images and details in his report are disturbing. It's a descent into darkness where terror reigned. Ukraine says Russia used this basement in the city of Kherson as a torture chamber, a place where fear and hope are written on the wall. You can get a sense of the desperation of the prisoners here carved in the wall. It says, God pray for us, God give us strength, God save and defend us. Andriy Kovalenko leads the war crimes investigation in Kherson. He tells us dozens of people moved through these rooms and halls. How likely would it be that they'd survive? First, the Russians would try to get someone to confess to a crime. If they refused, they'd be beaten and tortured. As of now, we still don't know the fate of more than 400 people abducted by the Russians in Kherson. Ukrainian and international experts, including Wayne Jordash, with more than 20 years of war crimes experience, accuse Russia of creating a system of genocide that leads straight to President Vladimir Putin. It looks very much like a World War II scenario. We're going to enslave people and the rest that we don't want, we will kill and destroy. Walking around the cells, there's a foul stench in the air. The Russians burnt tires in this building to cover up these torture chambers. But we can see the numbers on each door where people were detained. Andriy says electric shock was a regular form of torture, as he shows us one of the rooms. We see chairs in here. Were these chairs used in the torture? Yes. People were tied to chairs with tape, then electrocuted. The wires were connected to main body parts, mostly the genitals, nipples, or ears. And in order to intensify the pain, people were doused with water. Teams of investigators across Ukraine look into potential Russian war crimes. The job is dangerous. The war is never far away. In the distance, the rumble of artillery. We visit another alleged Russian torture site, a former police station. The brutality from the interrogations marks the walls. This blood splatter is the result of a traumatic blow. It tells us just how hard they beat people. We're told more than 300 people suffered here, including Andriy Kovani. There was constant stress, constant terror, screams at night, terrible torture, especially hearing the screams of someone else being tortured. What did the Russians do to you while you were detained? They beat me every day, interrogated me, and electrocuted me when I did not answer their questions. Do you feel lucky to have survived? Yes. Do you think you'll get justice? I'll get it from God and the Ukrainian armed forces. But Yuri Belisov wants justice in the courtroom for the more than 65,000 cases against Russia. In general, these torture places, if you call them, is a part of the system which is well organized, well planned, and serves a particular purpose. What was the purpose? The policy of Russian Federation, and in particular Putin. He said that Ukraine doesn't exist. It didn't exist before. To destroy that Ukrainian identity? Yeah, absolutely. That's the main task. Do you think Vladimir Putin knows about him? Absolutely. So he cannot know about it. Over the course of last year, CBS News teams visited towns plucked out of obscurity and thrust into a dark limelight, like Bucha. This is what war crimes look like. Defenseless civilians shot in the head with their hands bound. Residents taking their last ride. And Izium. They have found over 400 shallow graves and at least one of them a mass grave. Many towns suffered without notoriety. Blink and you'd miss Pravdine. This man shows us a house where he says Russian soldiers killed six people, including a 16-year-old girl, then blew it up. He says Russians also killed three of his relatives. I want those Russian monsters brought here in front of me. I would tear them all piece by piece. Ukraine also accuses Russia of kidnapping thousands of children. Do you think you'd get these kids back? So it's a huge number. And unfortunately, it, it would be difficult to return back everyone. Do you think you can get justice? Yeah, it would, would take time, but we definitely would have it. 
Ukrainian officials admit investigating the crimes is a tall order and are asking for international help. Uh, I've worked on the Rwandan genocide, the Sierra Leone civil war, Cambodian, the Khmer Rouge uh, regime, the breakup of former Yugoslavia. I've never seen anything as uh, well calculated as this. That was the plan from the outset to enslave millions of people and to have them swear allegiance to the Russian Empire. So these are coming from the top? These are coming from the top, without a shadow of a doubt. We've investigated enough now to see the patterns, and the patterns uh, which are becoming clearer and clearer by the day, but all of this is, is, is inbuilt into the system of how Russia intends to occupy Ukraine. So is it genocide? I'm really coming to the conclusion that it, 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 it is, yeah. And Ian Lee joins me now for more. Um, Ian, it's incredibly powerful reporting. There's obviously an incentive for Ukrainians to claim everything possible about the, what the Russians are doing. How do they put together a case? How are they, what's the proof here that they try to find? It's pretty meticulous. The first thing they do is they go to these sites. They look and see if there's any evidence, anything that they can glean information from, whether it's a weapon, whether it's uh, you know the torture sites they were finding, these wind-up uh, electric phones that they're using for electrocution. And so they would look for that. Also, we were when we were talking with Yuri Belislav, he was telling us that they're actually in touch with FSB, Russian FSB agents who are giving them information because at, when, at the end of the day, they, they believe, well, at least this is what Belislav told me, that when war crimes are presented, they want to be on the right side. And so they're helping the Ukrainians. Granted, we can't independently verify that that's happening. But he says that they are getting help from within the Russian FSB to find these documents also pertaining to torture. And I also should note, we reached out to the Russian embassy in London. We reached out to the Russian Ministry of Defense for comment, and they didn't uh, have anything to say to us. Wow, that's fascinating. Informants ahead of the case. Um, now, what about on the, the Ukrainian side? The Russians have made all kinds of claims. Um, mm -hmm. What's the state of um, allegations or uh, charges about what Ukrainian soldiers may or may not have done. Yeah, that's something that we also wanted to look into as well, because there are two sides to this conflict. And I spoke with Yuri Belislav. I said, are you looking into potential Ukrainian war crimes or crimes that are committed by their soldiers? And he said, we are aggressively going after that because we know that there is also an information war going on because they can't be accused of committing war crimes because that will look bad. That will look bad in front of their Western partners where they're, they're crucial for the weapons. And so they are really trying to toe the line. And if there are any crimes, and there have been accusations. They say they aggressively look into that. I also spot, uh, when I spoke with Wayne Jordash, the international expert, he said that he hadn't seen anything on the Ukrainian side that would lead to any sorts of widespread war crimes. And now, uh, finally, Ian, what, what's the threshold you mentioned in the peace genocide? Mm. What is the the threshold for that um, determination. And, and it is a legal term, and that's something that they want to take to the International Criminal Court. And there's a few things that they have to do. First, they have to prove it, mental intent. And that's basically that Russia went in there with the intent to either destroy the whole population or part of the population. So you have to have that mental intent and then the physical intent, which is uh, killing, which is causing harm. You have deliberate destruction. You have preventing people from having babies is another part. And also uh, moving children. Uh, with the intent of taking children from one group and giving them to another group. So these are all the elements that make up genocide. And these war crime experts believe that they can probably prove that in a court of law. Mm. Ian Lee, thank you for being here and thank you for being out there. To you and all your colleagues, we're really lucky. Thank, thank you. you.